Hi, today we're going to talk about cords, extension cords, uh, some of the rules, safety uh, things that you need to know about cords. First thing I want to say about any vacuum anywhere, somewhere on the cord is some printing. It's really hard to see it, but the printing is right here. And this printing tells me this is a 16 gauge cord. Then when I look at this cord, I say that's six, 75 feet, 50 feet, 75 feet, somewhere in there. There are times when this cord is not long enough, all right? And you need to run an extension cord. Say you're vacuuming a gym and it's a big double gym and you have to go somewhere. So what do you do? 16 gauge cord. It would be really easy to go to this cord and add this to it, but if you read the the fine print on this one, this is also a 16 gauge. So if you run a 16 gauge extension cord on an, a, a machine that already has a 16 gauge, you will, that is a very unsafe practice, you could overheat the cord, you uh, reduce the voltage coming to the machine, you'll wear the machine out prematurely, and so you always, the rule is, if this is a 16, the correct um, extension cord to put on this would be a 14 gauge. So with electrical appliances, as the number goes down on the cord, it's actually a bigger cord. So how big is a 14 gauge cord? This is a 14 gauge cord. Looks pretty big, right? This is the correct cord that if you're going to already extend a 50 or 75 foot cord further, you need to go to a 14 gauge on a 16. If you had a 14 gauge machine running, say a swing machine or a burnisher and you need an extension cord, you actually have to go to a 12 gauge. So that's the most important thing to get across today is a lot of people run an extension cord that is not adequate and then they wear out their machine or they overheat circuits and it's not safe. Next thing I want to talk about with cords is um, how do you plug them in and out? Many, many times in our service department when we um, uh, fix a machine, the ground is missing. There should always be three. If the ground is missing, missing, the machine is not safe to use. All right? And how does the ground it's come out? It's typically because people plug it in wrong. All right, so we'll just come over here and we'll plug this in. And notice I've got my hand right on the plug and I plug it in. So that's great. Most people from 20 feet away yank the cord out and when you do that the ground you get stuck inside the plug. The correct way always to undo a plug is to pull it from the plug itself. All right, so the final thing I want to talk about when it comes to cords is wrapping a cord up. Uh, it's critical that you wrap a cord correctly. Uh, if you don't, a cord can get all kinked and curled up and it's very bad for the cord. So how do we properly do a cord? So the best way to do a cord is come back to the machine, kind of do an overhand, nice big loose wrap. The goal is to have a cord that, that doesn't get all kinked up and wrapped up. Uh, and so you would do this with the cord. The most common thing that people do is put their arm up and wrap the cord. And every time I go around here, I'm actually spinning the cord, right? So when I take this out, I now have a kinky, kinked up cord. Correct way, once again, just take an arm's length, an arm's length, an arm's length, an arm's length, It'll be very quick. And in the end, on this machine, there's a little wrap on it so you can wrap the cord to keep it nice and tight. That's a proper way to wrap a cord.